Hi folks, I'm Azal Şener, Solutions Architect at SQL DBM. Today I'm going to talk about external tables in Databricks. They are different than the managed tables because managed tables, the ones that we have known so far, they are the traditional table that stores the data and it totally stored in the database environment. However, external tables are structured in the database, but the real data is stored externally in different cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Azure as well. And those are called external tables. So we have table structure in the database environment, but they are externally stored in different cloud platforms. So today we are going to review an external table, what it looks like in Databricks. And then we are going to review SQL DBM, how we can use SQL DBM to make this process easier. What kind of benefits SQL DBM can provide for us to work with external tables. So let's start with the Databricks part. I already have an external table, which is called orders. And this orders is located under the marks. So the table creation has been done. I can see the table here, but once we extend the options, there is no any indication that this table is referring to an external table. So there are several ways to see this information. Either you can run show create table statements and in the DDR, there is a keyword, which is location. And this location means that the table is an external table. So the table is structured in the tool in Databricks, but it is actually a pointer of a file that stores the real data in the cloud platform. In my case, it is AWS S3 bucket. And from here, I can understand this is an external table, but there's another place that we can understand if this table is an external table or a managed table, which is going to be done through the catalog. And here I can find the table, it is under the marks, and I have the tables, which is the orders. So this is the place that I can understand the table type if it is an external table or a managed table. If I wouldn't prefer to run show create table statement, wouldn't like to read the DDR, so I can basically go to the details and see all the metadata for the selected table. So let's take a look at the SQL DBM site, how we can help with the external tables, what kind of benefits the tool can provide us. So let's go to the SQL DBM. And this is our dashboard where you can see all the projects that have been created so far. I'm going to create a new project. And from here, I will select the Databricks option and existing database because I will do the reverse engineer. The option is not creating the entities from scratch. I'm going to select the direct connection and then I will choose the unit catalog API method because my external table is created in the unit catalog. And here I'm going to input my credentials and then I'll just hit connect to Databricks. Then the tool is going to list all the data catalogs, but my data catalog is SQL DBM demo, and then I'm gonna bring two schemas, and the external table is located here under the marks, if you remember, if as the orders table. So I'll just hit apply, and on the left side, I will review all the database objects that I have the views, materialized views, manage tables, external tables. And this structured format will make you understand much easier than going one by one and reading the DDL to understand if this is the manage table, if this is the external table. So I'm going to hit apply auto layout, then hit import. So all the entities will be brought from the database environment. And here, thanks to the visualization, I can understand the relationship. I can understand what kind of table types that are available. Those are the views. So we can also analyze the views that are going to create the relationship between the tables or the views because a view can be created from several tables or including uh, other views as well. So this is a materialized view and the normal views. So those are the entities, but we are not going to go one by one. We are just going to navigate to the diagram explorer and look for orders. And I know the orders table is an external table. Here I can double click on it and the tool is going to find. So we will have a different icon here. We can understand which table is an external table and we can see the relations with other entities here in the diagram could be with another external table or with a manage table like this example. So this is the first thing to visualize and understand the relationships and understand what entities are the external ones 
and what entities are the managed ones thanks to this categorization here on the left and the little icon that appears here. So we can do some schema change on our external table. What kind of changes I can do? I can rename a column uh, instead of store ID and this is going to be store name and the data type is going to be the string. Maybe I would like to reorder them a little bit. I want to add a new column and this new column's data type is going to be integer and once I'm done with my change, I can just click somewhere here so I will see the new column creation. So I have done some schema change here. Even before hitting the save button through the compare revisions, we can see the changes that I have been doing so far. And this is the change. But what I have been doing is I was adding a new column with the integer data type and not null applied. And I renamed the store name because this is not the store ID anymore and I just type the data type as string and I move the stuff ID a little bit upper because it was at the below. So I can review the changes here. So all the location mentions, table properties, table comments, column comments, primary keys, all the DDL properties are also here as expected. So here I can hit the save button. Okay, so far I did a reverse engineer. I brought all the database entities from the selected schemas and I did a couple of schema changes on my external table. But now we are going to review a new table creation and this table is going to be created as an external table. Then I would like SQL DBM is going to create the DDL at the forward engineer session because later on I will use this DDL into Databricks to create my external table. So let's do it visually and see how the DDL is going to be generated through the tool. To do that, um, we can go to the Diagram Explorer. We have the External Tables option. I'll just hit Create New and the table will be brought empty. And here I need to populate the columns. I can start adding the columns on this table. And let's say this is the new column and the data type is going to be timestamp NTZ. I don't have to type everything, you can also do it. But if the columns are coming from other tables, you can basically do the box selection like this. Uh, let's take this one too. And you can just drag and drop off. So those columns will be populated through the tool. The DDL creation will be done, so you don't have to write it on hand. For the order status, I have a default value, which is active. I did reverse engineer this, and the default value came directly by the Databricks. This is a default constraint, and this default value also inherited while I was dragging and dropping off the column on this new table. So here, I know this is an external table, I have to define the location, right? Once I select the table, we have the options here. And this is the place where I can define the location and select the file format. So I'm going to select Delta because later I would like to also apply the constraints, which is the primary key. And then I'll just put the location. And perfect. So let's create the primary key then. And stuff ID, okay, I decided this column is going to be the primary key, so I can basically move it above the line. So this column will be already declared as a primary key. And this table 11 has a relationship with the orders table. So this relationship can be created by dragging and dropping off the line. And there, you will be able to see the order ID is declared as a foreign key, which is referenced by the parent table, which is the orders. So I'm going to hit the save button and then I'll select table 11, then navigate to the forward engineering. And I'll see this table 11 has been already selected automatically. And now I'm going to hit generate SQL to review the DDL creation through the tool. So I've been creating this external table visually in the tool, like adding the columns, applying the default constraints, adding the primary key, adding the location, and the tool was able to convert all these visual inputs into a DDL format. So from here, I'm going to copy the DDL and run into Databricks to see if this DDL has been created correctly. 
Uh, one thing here, is this a brand new project, I didn't have the git integration. If I had the git integration, I was able to hit the push the git button and from there I could do the CRCD process. But let's copy the DDL and I'll just bring it into the Databricks. I will change the data catalog to SQL DBM demo and select the schema which is going to be the marks. And then we can just hit run. It is executing. We will wait. And the table creation has been done successfully. So the DDL code works as we expected. So as you see, the default constraint is created correctly. And we have the timestamp NTZ. We have the primary key declaration. And I have the location, table properties, everything. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it helpful. But after this session, if you feel you have more questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to help. Thank you very much.